Welcome to another video from McFatter Tech Musser. If you like these videos, please click subscribe. Welcome to another lab in Network Support Services, Windows Networking. I will be hosting this lab in Hyper-V. You as the student will follow along, answering all questions, and taking the appropriate screenshots as shown in your worksheet. So let's begin. 70-740 Lab 18 Managing Server Installations. The name doesn't really do justice to the topic. What we're going to be looking at is WSUS, Windows Server Update Services. And we're also going to be looking at Windows Server Backup, the backup feature that is built in that you can use on your Windows Server. Keep in mind that this may not be a fully featured backup solution that you want to use in your production network. You may need to have a backup solution that can uh, manage and, and correlate all those backups to a single structure. Uh, however, if you want to back up a single server, the Windows Server Backup feature is a very good solution. So let's get into WSUS. Now, uh, as a side note, I'm going to be following this video up with an additional video that delves uh, a little bit deeper into WSUS. In this additional video, we're going to review how we can really manage and separate how our clients are being brought into our WSUS because Remember, with your Active Directory, there's two basic ways that you're going to design your Active Directory, by role or by location. So you may have different servers in different locations. So if you designate your Active Directory to be designed by location, let's use, for example, here in South Florida where I reside. You know, perhaps you've got a presence in the Miami area, the West Palm Beach area, and the Orlando area, and each one of those three locations has their own servers. Well, you decide that you're going to create your Active Directory and you're going to do your hierarchy by location. Well, it just makes sense if you've got multiple WSUS servers, let the computers in the Orlando location get their updates from that server and apply updates for the Orlando locations maybe differently than the Miami location. Maybe let the Orlando computers have updates applied differently than the Miami. Maybe you've got different ways that you want to have updates being installed. Maybe you want to have different ways that updates are being applied. Which updates are where? you can have different WSUS servers. It doesn't have to come from just one. Well, that'll be for another video. For this video, this is going to be correlate to our lesson 18. So let's get into it. In this lab, we're going to be looking at how we go about installing WSUS, configuring WSUS, configuring our clients, the approving of WSUS updates, and then we're going to follow that up with installing the Windows Server backup feature and then performing a manual backup of some local folders to a remote share. So to begin with, we're going to be starting out with working on our Server 3. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get that up on our screen and log on to that while we describe our first exercise. So while that logs on, our first exercise, we're going to be installing WSUS. We're going to use Server Manager to install it, uh, but remember that this is a test environment. So we're going to use what's called the Windows Internal Database. We're not going to connect to a full-blown SQL Server. If you're in a large production environment, you're probably going to, going to want to put that 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 WSUS database on a SQL server gives you much more greater management and maintenance capabilities. First off, we're going to create a folder to where we're going to store our updates. So we're going to go into File Explorer, we're going to go to this PC, our local disk, we're going to click on a new folder, and we're going to call that folder updates. 
Now we have a place to store, right? We're, we'll go ahead and close File Explorer. We're going to go Manage, Add Roles and Features, Next, Next, and Next. And we're going to scroll down to the very bottom of the list, and there's our Windows Server Update Services. We'll select that. We're going to add our Remote Server Administration Tool Features and click Next. Next, Next, on our Select Role Services page. Our WID connectivity, our Windows internal database, it's selected because we're going to be storing that WSUS database locally on this server. Our first question is, what option should be selected to store a database on a dedicated SQL server? Well, it's the one that's not selected. If we highlight this, we can see it installs the feature that enables WSUS to connect to a Microsoft SQL Server database. So if we were going to run a dedicated SQL Server, we would need to select SQL Server Connectivity. There's your answer for question number one. We're going to go ahead and we're going to click Next. We need to specify where are we going to store those updates. That's that path that we just created, the C colon backslash updates. There's our folder. We'll go ahead and we're now going to click next again. On the web server, we click next. On the role services, we're going to accept those settings and click next. And then we'll click install. This will take a few moments to install. Uh, the setup for it's going to take a little bit longer because we're going to need to connect to Microsoft. So if you look here, I do have our router running. So this server can connect to WSUS because we need to be able to poll for updates. Remember, WSUS is going to give you the ability to granularly control what updates your computers get and when they get them and get reporting back on what updates are installed, what haven't been installed, what may have failed. Having that view is critically important for you to maintain the security of your organization. This is all part of our patch management. You can't rely on the individual computers to have their updates installed because you'll never know what patch level all your systems are at. WSUS gives you the ability to get that reporting plus the push of the updates out. It also controls bandwidth. You're going to do one download for an update that you could push out to 10 or hundreds or even thousands of computers. Limit internet access. Bandwidth costs money. The more you can control your bandwidth consumption, the greater your efficiency of your network. Now that our WSUS has installed, we're going to move into our second exercise. And what that is, is you must configure WSUS so that it can retrieve those updates from Microsoft or perhaps another WSUS server. We're also going to configure WSUS for the updates that we're going to want to be downloaded and then we'll configure when those downloads occur so you control when this when this happens when multiple servers are used the server that obtains the updates from Microsoft is called the upstream server the servers that obtain their updates from the upstream server are called the downstream servers if we use multiple WSUS servers, you need to make sure that server to server and server to client communications are using SSL, Secure Sockets Layer. You would, you would ensure that by the use of certificates. In our case, we're not going to be doing this with certificates. So we can now close our Add Roles and Features wizard screen. We're going to go to Tools. And then we're going to go to the bottom of our list to Windows Server Update Services. The first thing that we need to do is we need to complete our installation. So yes, this is our correct path. We're going to click Run. Now, while this is installing, I'd like everyone to take a screenshot and paste that into step number three in the exercise. This is going to take a little bit for it to for it to 
run. So while it completes, I'm going to pause the video and I'll be back in just a few moments. Okay, and through the magic of video, what took a, actually did take about a minute is complete. So we can now click close. And now our Windows Server Update Services configuration wizard starts. Now this is how we determine how our server is going to function. We're going to click Next. And I'm going to uncheck to join the Microsoft Update program. This is a test server. There's no point to it, right? And I'm going to click Next. On the Choose Update Server page, we're going to answer our second question. If I was going to synchronize from another Windows Server Update Services server, which default port is used? Well, it's right there. 8530. We are not going to be synchronizing from another server. So I'm going to reselect synchronize from Microsoft Update and make sure that you've typed in 8530 for your answer to question two. Now, so this would be designated as our upstream server. We're going to go ahead and we're going to click next. We're not using a proxy server, so we can simply click next. Now it's time to connect to Microsoft Update. If this was a downstream server, we would connect to our upstream server. We're going to click Start Connecting. Here again, this is going to take a few moments, so I'm going to pause the video while it connects. What we're doing is we're pulling down the types of updates that are available, the products that can be updated, and the available languages that we can use. While this occurs, I'm going to pause the video and I'll be back as soon as it completes. Okay, uh, it has completed our initial update. It did take a lot more than just a couple minutes. It had to not only retrieve the types of updates that could be available and the products that we could update and the available languages, but this is when it actually started to create that SQL Server internal database uh, that we're using. So that all had to happen. So it takes a few minutes for this to, to occur. But we're ready to click Next. So on our Connect to Upstream Server, we're now ready to click Next. And that takes us to our language page. If you're using this in production, perhaps there's a different language you need to select. We're going to leave English as the only selected language. We're going to click Next. And now we can see all the products that are available for us to update. There's a lot of them. Now you'll notice, look at this, XP, Vista, Ultimate, all our different versions of server. I'm going to just go back all the way up to the top of our list and I'm going to select all products once and then I'm going to select product all products a second time and that'll deselect everything. We're going to go back down our list and what I'm looking for is Windows Server 2016. And here is our 2016. I'm going to select simply Windows Server 2016. I'm not looking for us to be downloading an, uh, all these other operating systems. We're in a test environment. We may demonstrate some of these other features in my additional video that I was talking about. We're going to go ahead. We're going to click Next. And under the types of products that we want, understand that this is going we could if we were working in production maybe we wanted we want to do drivers maybe we want to, we want to do update roll-ups and updates and upgrades for what we're doing we're simply going to do critical updates definition updates and no security updates we're going to click next and we're now we're on our synchronize schedule page when do we want to have these updates occur well, for our lab, you know what, we're going to leave it manual. But if I'm working in a production, I'm going to set this to synchronize automatically. And you can determine how many times a day. You can do it once an hour. You can do it twice a day. How many times a day do you want it to occur? Perhaps you want to do it multiple times, say four times a day or six times a day. Make sure that you're getting those critical updates as fast as possible. Or perhaps one time a day. 
It depends on your organization. As I said, for our test environment, I'm going to select Synchronize Manually and click Next. And we're ready to begin our initial synchronization. So at this point, it's going to contact Microsoft Update. We're going to put a check mark there and we're going to click Next. We can see what is left. Well, perhaps we want to secure it with our certificate and use SSL. Create computer groups. We're going to have to assign those computers to those groups uh, either manually or using group policy. Group policy is the way to go. A computer comes onto your organization, it gets its group policy settings, it reports to the WSUS server, and it's automatically set up. You don't have to do anything. Make it automatic. We're going to go ahead and we're going to click finish. It's now, it's still here, it's right here. It's now we can go ahead, we can select our LUN Server 3, and we can see that our initial synchronization has started. So I'd like everyone to take a screenshot and paste that into step number 16. Okay, this is going to take a few minutes to run. So while that runs, I'm going to expand our server by clicking on the little carrot to the left of it. And again, I'm going to expand the computers. We can see we have all computers. I'm going to right click on all computers and I'm going to say add computer group and I'm going to simply name it group one. If this was production, it might be something a little bit more descriptive of my environment, but for our test environment, this is fine. We're going to click add. And now if we expand all computers, we can see we do have a group one. Initially, our computers are going to be added to unassigned. And Go ahead and take a screenshot and paste this into step number 22. So we're ready to configure our clients. So if we want to do it manually, that's one thing. Well, you know what? That may be not the most efficient way to do things. Keep in mind our initial synchronization is still going on. That's why this is running a little bit slower. You can see we're 13% of the way. What we're going to do now is we're going to connect to our domain controller. We're going to open up that DC1. And we're going to get logged in. And we're going to go to Group Policy Management. And in our Group Policy Management, we're going to create a, a new uh, group policy. But first, we want to create an organizational unit to where we're going to be able to manage things understand that we use organizational units to be able to organize the hierarchy of our structure. I'm going to select the adatum.com and I'm going to right click and I'm going to say new organizational unit. And we're going to simply call it servers and press enter. We now have a new OU. I'm going to select computers and we can see there is our server 4. I'm going to right click and I'm going to move and I'm going to move that to servers and we can see that that computer that member server is now a member of the servers OU. We're going to close our Active Directory users and computers and we're going to go to group policy management. In group policy management we're going to create a group policy four servers. And so we're going to expand our forest, we're going to expand our domain, we're going to expand a datum.com. We can see our servers OU. I'm going to right click on them and I'm going to say create a GPO in this domain and link it here. So this will immediately take us to a new group policy object that will be linked to servers. What's the name of it going to be? It's going to be Server Updates. We'll click OK. And if we select Servers, we can now see that Group Policy is there. I'm going to expand it. There's our object. I'm going to right click and I'm going to say Edit. I'm going to maximize this to make it easy for us all to see what's going on here. 
I'm going to expand computer configurations and then policies and then administrative templates and Windows components. We're going to scroll down to the bottom of our list till we see Windows Update. In Windows Update, I'm going to sort by name, that way it's alphabetical, and I'm going to go down to where it says specify an intranet Microsoft Update service location. We're going to double click on that and we're going to click enabled. Well, it's enabled, but it, we haven't told it where to go yet. So we're going to type in HTTP colon backslash LUN dash SVR3. That's our server. Oh, wait a minute. Did it back. Did it wrong. There we go. That's a little bit more like it. Now, I'm also going to put that in as my statistics server. We're going to go ahead and click OK. We're going to go up to Enable Client Side Targeting and we're going to click Enabled. And what are we going to enable it for? We're going to enable it for Group 1. Remember, we cr created that Group 1 on our WSUS. We're going to click OK. Now, I'd like everyone to go ahead and take a screenshot and paste this into step number 21. We've only enabled two of our options, but that's what we're doing in this lab. Now, let's answer question number three. If you don't use group policies to configure the clients to use WSUS, how would you configure this system? In other words, how would you configure those computers? Well, you could use the individual system registry. Now, that seems like a lot of work to me, but the answer to question three is you would configure settings within the registry. So each one of those computers would have to have their registry modified to connect to your WSUS. A lot easier using group policy. Question three, you would configure settings within the registry. Now, we've created a group policy. We've linked it to servers, the servers OU. We've put a server in there. Now, Server 4 is not turned on, uh, and we're not going to be utilizing it for this. This is just a test lab. In my expanded uh, video that I'm going to do, we'll actually deploy updates. Let's go back over to our SVR3, and what we're going to do is we're going to select the Updates node and expand that. And then we're going to select Critical Updates. Let's change the status to Installed not applicable and click refresh okay it completed and there's nothing shown we've got nothing I'm going to change to any and I'm going to click refresh one more time here again it's gonna take a few moments remember we're just working in a test environment and we're gonna let this refresh and we should get a listing of some updates here hopefully there are some critical updates that we need Okay, and here are all those updates. What I'd like to do is I want to see these updates. We can, if we select this, here we have a synopsis of it. And we're going to move this screen up a little bit. So we don't see much here. We see the title. We have a whether it's in, how many are installed or not, whether it's improved. That's all it's being displayed. Not very, not very informative, but we can see that there's no computers needing it at this point. We can see the link to the Microsoft uh, informational page. We can see the updates that have superseded this update. All the, the all of these updates have superseded it. If this had previously superseded an update, it would be listed here as updates superseded by this update. Let's go ahead, we're going to right click and we're going to say approve. It asks us what group do we want to approve it for? Well, we're going to select group one and we're going to approve for installation and click OK. Takes a few moments. We can close. Now, what I'd like everyone to do is go ahead and get a screenshot showing that we've approved this one for install. 
screenshot, paste that into step number 10. If we go back up to our LUN SVR3, we can see our synchronization is still occurring. That's why everything's going so slow. Once our synchronization is done, our performance will be greatly enhanced on here. But additionally, that update will then appear as being down. In fact, there it goes. There's our update being downloaded. So you can see the status of whether those updates are being downloaded. If I was immediately have gone to a server that should get that update and it attempted to have it install, it wouldn't install because the update had not been downloaded to my server yet. What if that was a much, much, much larger update? Let's say it was a, an update that was 300 megabytes in size and I need to deploy that to 500 PCs. If those 500 PCs are all going to the internet and getting their own updates, that's a lot of bandwidth being consumed versus we download it once to our WSUS server and then distribute it internally. So this completes our Windows Server Update Services exercises. We created a group policy to be able to manage them. Uh, we didn't really put it into effect, but these are the steps that you go through. Now, I encourage you to check out that WSUS Advanced video that I'm going to be uh, posting. It's going to show us uh, applying those updates, downloading for multiple operating systems, polling for updates, updating our last access and just one thing before we go let's jump back over to that critical updates page if you go to the title bar where it says title installed approved and right click on that you can add much more granular information here for example i could click on supersedence and now i can see those updates that have been superseded if i right click again and select needed count now a column in the middle shows those computers that require this particular update if i sort by supersedence and go to the top of the list i can see the top level updates which i know they supersede other updates we can see that right here the ones that have the middle you can see there's three little symbols there. The middle means it supersedes an update, but has been superseded. And we can see that view right here. It supersedes these updates, but these updates all supersede this update. And then finally, looking at our list, and that list is getting a little bit longer, we can see a couple updates that the little blue highlight is in the very bottom row. And that means it has been superseded by another update. It doesn't supersede anything. It's a base level update that's been superseded by other things. Just a little bit different view. We'll go into more detail on that in my advanced video. So for now, that ends our exercises of working with WSUS. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to close the WSUS console. In our fifth exercise, we're going to be installing the Windows Server Backup feature. And then we're going to use that in our lab challenge. So it's very simple. We're going to go over, over to our domain controller. We'll jump back over to that again. And we're going to be going into the Add Roles and Features. We can close our Group Policy Manager and Group Policy Management Editor. And we're going to click on Manage. And we're going to go to Add Roles and Features once more. And we're going to click Next, Next. On our destination, Next. We're going to click Next one more time to get to the Features. And we're going to go to the bottom and we're going to select Windows Server Backup. We're going to click Next and Install. 
once our installation is complete that'll be your next screenshot and I'm going to pause the video while it installs okay so actually while that's installing I'm going to jump back over and it's done well never mind never mind we're going to go over to our SVR 3 and we're going to go into file explorer because this is going to be the destination of our backup and it's still performing a little slow because uh, we're still doing that synchronization I'm going to select this PC and then I'm going to open up the C drive and I'm going to make another folder and I'm going to simply call it BAC back and press enter I'm going to right click on that we're going to share this out so we're going to go to properties sharing advanced sharing we're going to select share this folder we're going to click the permissions button and we're going to allow everyone full control and click OK click OK and then click OK one once more we have a folder that's shared out. We're going to open up that back folder. Perhaps this is where we're going to store all our backups. So we're going to make another new folder and we're going to call it back one and press enter. Remember it inherits the settings of the parent folder. So it'll be available through that share. We're going to jump over to our DC one and we're going to go to tools and down towards the bottom of our list would be Windows Server Backup there it is and we're going to select in the left hand column local backup it's going to read our information and now on our right hand column we're going to select backup once under our backup options we're going to leave this different options selected because this is the backup once and we're not doing it on a schedule we click next and we're going to select custom for the type of backup we click next and now we're going to select items we're going to go ahead and we're going to expand our C drive and we're going to put a check mark beside program data and the user folder and then we're going to click OK now do you know what that program data folder is? This is our fourth question. Well, the program data folder, it contains all your application data. That means it's program settings, user data, other things like that for all your installed programs on the computer. It is also where your desktop folder and document folders reside. So your answer to question number four is the program data folder contains all your application data. We're going to go ahead. We're going to click next. And we're going to select a remote shared folder. And click next. And now we're going to type in whack whack lun dash svr3 slash bak slash BAK1. Remember, you'd want each one of your server backups to be in a different location, right? We're going to click Next, and on our confirmation page, we're going to select Backup. While that backup begins to run, and now that it has started, I'd like everyone to take a screenshot and paste that into step number 23. We can see it's beginning. It's going to take a little while for this to run. But this is how you back up a server immediately if you want to have a specific folder backed up. So we did a backup once. You could set a backup schedule. You can recover from this. So this is how you, and there it is done. Well, our lab is also done. Thank you for viewing this lab. Once again, if, oh, it did fail. wonder why it failed. Let's click on the message and see what, see what uh, it says. Well, no, here it says backup full failed. There are no more files. Well, okay. Don't know why it gave us a failed, but it did complete. Our exercise is done. I want to thank everyone for viewing this lab. 
uh, once again, if you enjoy these labs, please subscribe to our channel. And as I close every one of my videos, I'll see you in the next lab or lesson.